Hi everybody, God bless you. How are you today? I am excited to be coming to you and to spend just a few minutes and share with you some things that's been on my heart. And um, I've done a video um, a couple days ago talking about something similar, but it's still in my spirit. And um, so I wanted to read some scripture to you and pull something out that's been ministering to me in 2 Chronicles. It's going to be a familiar uh, verse to you, chapter 7, verse 14. But I wanted to um, talk to you um, just for uh, this moment and tell you that I'm very grateful and thankful to all of you guys that take the time to listen and to be a part of Harrison Ministries International. I thank you for all your prayers, and I am feeling so much better and I'm resting while I can rest and um, but I'm able to do things that I haven't been able to do in the past three weeks so I am grateful to God in this process of healing um, I want to talk clearly with you about it I am NOT a stranger to the healing scriptures I'm not a stranger to um, watching medical miracles take place. It seems like the enemy, when he wants to come and attack my family, he has always tried to go through the door of attacking us physically. But God has been faithful, and he's going to continue to be. What the enemy fails to remember and to understand is that we believe and manifested healing and that no matter what is headed our direction we understand what scripture says and no matter what our bodies are telling us it doesn't define what we believe in our heart we know that our truth that's written upon the tablets of our hearts is that by his stripes we were healed I know without any doubt that Jesus took stripes upon his back and that whatever is going on in my body is a mockery to the whipping posts. And that this is just the enemy. I'll also look at this as not a distraction. It's not a stumbling block. This is simply, I know because scripture tells me that if I trust him and I thank him because he says, In all things give thanks for this is the will of God concerning me. And I trust him in this. I know that he'll take this and use it for my good. So with all these thoughts going on as I rest, I've been able to redeem my time. Now, have there been moments of tears? <laughs> moments of weariness? Moments of what in the world? Yes, there has been. But I have maintained to know what the truth is. Let me tell you something about when you are in the middle of something. It may not be physical. It may be financial. It may be emotional. Whatever it is, there is a way of escape. There is nothing new under the sun. And Jesus was well aware of the price that he was paying. And he paid it in full. There's not anything Nothing, no matter how horrible, no matter how bleak, no more, no matter how, I don't even know the word put right there. He is the answer. And I've always said this, and I'll say it again. It's, it's not on God's side. It is always on our side. Now, I can't talk about you. I can only talk about myself. Because, see, I can't bind a devil in you. Only you can bind a devil in you. I can cast the devil out, but I can't bind the devil in you. I have to, my job is to bind the enemy in my own mind. When Jesus was talking with his disciples, come on, I've already told you this, but let me remind you, when he was talking with his disciples, he asked the disciples, he said, who do they say that I am? And the disciple says, well, they compare you to the prophets. But then, he looked at one particular disciple. Probably the one that gave him the most trouble, right? 
Simon Verjona. He looked at him, and he didn't see Simon. He saw Peter. He saw what was, not what was, but what was to come. He saw into, into eternity future. He saw into, he saw with an anointing like the Issachar anointing. He saw further and he acted accordingly. That's what the, that's what Jesus did. And he said, who do you say that I am? And without hesitation, Simon says, you are the Christ. You are the Christ, the anointed one, son of God. And Jesus replied and he said, you know what, Simon Barjona? Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. In other words, principalities, your own way of thinking did not reveal this to you. Even miracles and things that you've seen did not reveal this to you. He said, my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You know what he confirmed right there? I see someone that has made is in communion. I see someone that communion is hearing and seeing the Father. I see someone that has eyes to see and ears to hear. That's what he said when he said that. And he said, because this has been revealed to you, I'm getting ready to give you the keys to the kingdom. Come on. Hear me. He said, whatever you, Simon, bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Isn't that powerful? When, when I think about the authority and opportunity given to us, Normally, we don't look for them. We don't see them, especially when everything's going good, right? Come on, let's just be real. But I have made it my thing that when the enemy is trying to attack me in any which way, I immediately go inside the Word of God, and I immediately recognize it as an opportunity, not a stumbling block. And I say to the Holy Spirit, Reveal to me, because it's, it's not what I believe that's keeping the manifestation of your promise. It's not, that's not, that don't even line up. So it must be my unbelief. So I began to ask the Lord, I said, Lord, I know what I believe. I know what I know. I know what I've been transformed by. But Re remind me, show me those things. Maybe I've pushed under the rug. Maybe I don't remember. Maybe it happened when I was younger, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, young adult. Maybe it happened last week and I just, I didn't think of it. I didn't see it the way you see it. Right? So I said, Lord, I know there's power in belief. But show me my unbelief. And as I began to lay here and rest, I began to allow the Holy Spirit to bring back to my mind, bring back to my spirit, the things that I've allowed in my mind, come out my mouth, my thoughts or anything that didn't line up with his word. Anytime I act upon something, that goes against what he has already said. Because there's only one truth, and that's out of the mouth of God. If, if I've said something opposing to his word, if I've acted accordingly that opposes his word, any time in my life, even as a child, I wanted him to reveal it to me. Because in those moments, I, Bronna Harrison, was in disobedience. And disobedience is unbelief. And unbelief is sin. Mm -hmm. And again, I can't tell you about you. I can only talk about me. 
I remember the Lord began to, I shared this on a video the, the other day, the Lord began to show me there's been times that I have come in agreement with fear. I was, I, that was a, a second that I chose who I was going to serve in that moment. And disobedience, unbelief manifested. And I began to react with that. Today, I went to Holy Spirit again. Holy Spirit, reveal to me. And I began to pray in the Spirit. And you know, I was praying in the Spirit. Things began to softly, gently, like a mother, taking care of their young, began to drop into my spirit. Maybe moments that I was a part of gossip are a part of looking at something and speaking before I knew my facts. Come on, we've all, we're all, we've all done that. And I said immediately when the Lord reminded me of something, I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for re reminding me of that and I began to take that and I said Lord if there's any time in my life from the time I could speak to my to today that I've ever spoken an ill word against someone whether it be truth or not it was not my place I repent I repent to you forgive me of disobedience Holy Spirit show me more of myself from any time of my life. Give me opportunity to bring it before you now. I don't want to stand on that great and terrible day of the Lord. I don't want to stand before you. When I stand before you, I want you to see yourself. Not Rana. Right? So this has been what I've been doing. Let me tell you something. As I am spooning out everything in me that hasn't been like him, then what is happening, I'm going prove to prove it to you in scripture, what is happening is as I am decreasing, he is increasing, and that that is attacking me is having to flee. I can feel strength. I can feel stronger. Healing manifest. Anointing manifest. Power, authority, forgiveness, love. The things of who makes up the Father begins to manifest and heal when the word of the Lord is put into effect I want to read to you a scripture um, that you've you've heard a lot of times but I want to I want to remind you of a vision I had and sometimes the Lord will give me an open vision or a dream and it, it I will think it's for that time and it will be but then the Lord will bring it back and say it's a now word right here right here so in second Chronicles chapter um, 7, verse 14. It says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn. Let's stop right there. Well, let me go ahead and read it. And turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Okay. Before I moved into this house. I want to tell you an open vision. It happened. I saw it. I don't repent of it. I don't know everything. But I know when I see something. I know when I see a vision. Believe this. Don't believe it. You know. It's up to you. This happened. I was, I'm a side sleeper. 
and I was sleeping in this bed in a different house. And I was on my side, and the door to that bedroom was, um, I was facing the left, the, the, the door was on my right, uh, to my back. Beside the door is a light switch. Beside the light switch is our TV mounted on the wall. And I woke up because I felt the presence of the Lord so strong. That woke me. I raised up and turned, and when I looked, and standing between the light switch and the TV mounted on the wall was the angel of the Lord just standing there. I remember rubbing my eye, and I said to him, Now, if you woke up, and Jesus is standing in your room. You often, do you ever wonder what you would say or ask? Well, I asked a question. And there's things that I've noticed that when I have an open vision with the Lord, it's like He pulls out of me um, what I'm supposed to ask or say. It's like there's a it's that communion that's taking place. It's kind of beyond me. So I raised up, rubbed my eye, and I said, What time is it? That's what I said. And the Lord said, It is time to turn. I remember so, like it was, you can't take this vision from me. It was powerful. It was powerful. It took me hours to I don't want to say get over it but to come to be normal feeling I remember he said it's time to turn I remember he tilted his head a little bit like this and he goes my people and he shook his head and he turned it my people they are they're praying mm. they're humbling themselves my, he said, my people, they're seeking me, but I need them to turn. And then he said, prophesy and tell them to turn. Tell them to finish it. Turn. Let me tell you why. Because if it says, if my people, I want to start off with that word, if. And I want you to pay attention to it. I want you to find this in your Bible. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. That word, if, means it's up to you. It's a choice. You can do it or not. It's not on God's side. It's on your side. It's not about this or that. He says, if my people, it's your choice. You have to choose. And it's easy to choose when everything is fine. When you can just get in a car and drive down the road and go to the grocery store yourself. I haven't been able to do that in almost four weeks. So in the middle of my pain, there's been a spiritual pain in my body, a spirit of pain. In the middle of my pain, in the middle of this, what has been trying to wear me down, I answered this chapter when it said, if, I said, I will. Choose me. Because what I feel is not my truth. This is a lying sign of wonder. My truth is, I choose you. Even in this, you are still my healer. I, I choose you. So he says, if my people, which are called by my name. Name means nature. By my name, which are called by my nature to heal. By my nature to provide. By my nature, you know his names. Right? These are the things you got to do. Humble yourself. I don't care what your title is. I don't care what your gifts is. The, 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 the office, the gifts that you have to preach or to teach or to prophesy or sing or to 
whatever your gifts is, it has that is irrelevant to your relationship. You're not going to be able to stand here there in front of him as this or that. He's going to look to see where you decrease and he increased. So he says, humble yourselves. That's one, number one. Pray. Do we even know how to pray? Or are we complaining? Because praying is speaking because it's confession of the mouth. Praying is speaking what he has said for you. Praying is agreement. Praying is a covenant. Praying is communion, speaking the things he said through you. That's that's praying. And there he told the disciple says, Well, how do we do it? And he tells in scripture how to do it. And seek. Why seek? Because he said, If you seek me, you will find me. He's setting you up and getting you to do something that guarantees you finding him. Because if you seek the Father and never find him, then it makes the whole Bible a lie. Then the whole thing is a lie. So he put in here, and seek. Why? Because if we truly seek him with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole spirit, we will find him, right? Seek my face. That means seek my face. My presence, my presence. Sometimes we pray and we give up before the presence. There are scriptures that says, do this until I come. And and we, those that have eyes to the skies, continue looking for the great day. But that until I come means... Till it manifest. He said, My seek my face, seek my presence. My sight. I want you to stay there in that moment till you can see what I see, till you can hear what I am saying. Stay there on my face. This is communion, hearing and seeing. All right? Hold on. Having to use my phone. Seek my face. And turn. He said, tell my people they to finish it, to turn. Turn is repentance. Forgiveness and repentance are two different things. To repent means to turn away from 180. Don't just don't do it. Don't do it anymore. He said, turn away from. If it's not me, don't think it, don't say it, don't do it, don't feel it, turn away from. Don't entertain it because if you're not turning from your flesh, from your carnal person, from the things of this world, then you are in disobedience to him. Therefore, there's sin in your life. Right? So he he said, I need you to turn. Why? He said, from what? From our wicked ways, the things that that causes us to not have the fulfillment, the completeness of his word manifested in our life. Not on Sundays and Wednesdays, but daily. This turning will sharpen everything that is him in you. Your discernment will sharpen. Your purpose will sharpen. Your gifts will sharpen. Your gifts and callings, those things without repentance, they will mature when you do. They will mature. Ministry follows my what I do with Rana. 
don't put that cart before that horse. Most people pray for their ministry to grow, open doors for me, bigger crowds, fill my church, all these things. And there's nothing wrong with those things. But you have to be free yourself. I said this in my book. You cannot free other people if you're not free yourself. He says, from your wicked ways, then, then, this is what he promises you once you do these things. Then I will hear from heaven. That word hear means I will obey from heaven. You mean the Father will obey me? He will obey the word of the Lord in which you've been transformed out and what you are prophesying, which the, oh, the word of God in which you know, the word of God in which you are communion with, the word of God you are confessing. He said, I will bring it to pass. I will obey from heaven. I'm giving you a powerful word right now and I hope you know that because this is how healing manifests this is how financial pros prosperity manifests this is how peace comes this is how it happens right it's communion this is communion so I will obey I will hear from heaven and I will forgive because he's not going to look at me in my filthy rags. He's going to look at his son and see that the price was paid. Right? He said, I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Let me tell you, I will make healthy. I am the healer. I am the great physician. I'm talking about healing financially, healing mentally, healing emotionally, healing physically. Praise God. I will heal your distresses, he says. I will heal your hurt. I will literally heal. I will bring back to order is what it means. I will repair I will cure. I am the great physician. Amen. I, I wish I had my, my Hebrew book over here because we would break down some of these things. Isn't that the coolest? Let me tell you something. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. This is powerful. This is powerful right here. I'm excited about it. So you want to know what I'm doing? This is what I'm doing. <laughs> this is called redeeming the time. Redeem your time. Don't just lay in your weakness. Don't just lay in your sickness. Don't just lay in your pain. Listen, I've had pain so great in this body of mine. All I could do was cry or throw up. And I would lay and I would throw up or I would lay in tears and I would say, you know what? It does not change what I know to be my truth. I will redeem my time. And I begin to say, Lord, I thank you that this is, doesn't have to be my end. It doesn't have to be my future. It doesn't have to be a stumbling block. But I am going to trust you in this. You ain't causing this. But you did tell me that you would make a way of escape for me. You hadn't caused this, but you did tell me that you would work this out for my good if I trust you. Father, it's not on your side. I know it's on my side. And I am not going to miss this opportunity. The pain in my body is just a reminder to me that he is Jehovah Rapha, my healer. And you know what? I don't care. I'm, it, 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 may take, it may take seconds 
to manifest. It may take whatever it takes. He is worth it. He is worth it. What are you going through today? What is what is the enemy trying to destroy you with? Is it your mind? Is he trying to destroy your mind? Is it your health? Is it is it whatever it is? Cast your cares upon him. Get into your word. There is no other answer, by the way. There is no other way outside of him. The woman with the issue of blood, she spent all she had. She went to all the doctors. There was nothing. There was nothing she could do. Her, uh, her only answer was to touch Jesus. That's what you got to do. You got you to gotta get a hold of him. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Quit making excuses. Quit blaming your pastor. <laughs> Quit blaming everybody around you. Quit blaming circumstances. Take responsibility and say, Holy Spirit, show me. I know what I believe, but show me my unbelief. I don't want anything between me and him ever amen listen guys thank you so much if there's anything that Harrison Ministries can do for you we can pray for you speak the word towards you we will you can personal message us if you're dealing with suicidal thoughts oppression depression physical pain in your body you're not alone there is a way of escape and those are lying signs and wonder from the pit of hell, the enemy. They're not from your father. You are loved by an almighty God. And you're worth it. You are worth it to him. He died on the cross and paid the price so that you could be free. Amen. Reach out to someone. Don't let the enemy make you feel alone. If you don't know there. There are pastors, there's churches, there's Harrison Ministries. We'll do everything we can to bring you to a place of, of deliverance. This is a year of deliverance. This is a year of, of, of anointing and power. This is a move of God that's taking place. You need to get in the water. Get in that spirit. We must know him in spirit and in truth. Thank you for those that are prayer partners for Harrison Ministries that pray with us for all these other people. Thank you for, for those that are our financial partners to us. Because of you, I'm able to go and do what I'm able to do. Thank you for being a part of that. If you want us to come and minister, do a communion, revival, prophetic nights, just minister at your women's conference, your youth conference, your revival, whatever we need to do. You can contact us at our Facebook, Harrison Ministries, uh, or you can contact us. Our email is harrisonministries at yahoo.com, and we will set that up. All right? I'm excited. God bless you. Know that I love you, and he loves you too. Have a great and powerful day in the Lord. Amen.